Welcome to the America First Policy Institute Weekly Rundown, where we bring you highlights from our policy experts' media appearances. Each week, we address the nation's pressing issues, guided by policies that put America first. Brooke Rollins joined the Benny Johnson Show to discuss the importance of cultural leadership and long-term strategies to safeguard America's founding principles. Brooke emphasized the need for bold leadership across sectors to counter the erosion of traditional values. She outlined how AFPI is cultivating alliances with cultural icons and communities to build a resilient, united movement for the future of America. At some point, you just don't worry about the noise, right? At some point, you have a, a country that is literally sliding into communist oblivion. And if you're not willing to stand up now, when are you ever going to stand up? And so my, I was so encouraged for a lot of reasons. First, because I think Rocky is probably my favorite movie of all time. Um, I just love it. And so growing up in small town, Texas, you know, we didn't have a lot, but we had Rocky Balboa. And uh, so that was the first thing. The second thing is I sincerely believe this to be true, that while Sylvester Stallone may be one of the few of the AAA list in Hollywood who's willing to stand up, I believe there are dozens, if not hundreds more standing behind him waiting for the permission to do so. And this is true in the black community, the Hispanic community. I mean, all these key communities that are now coming together and finding those those legends, those warriors, those lions who are willing to stand up no matter the consequence for America, just like our founders. That now begins the build, the build of bringing those cultural leaders together and creating something that I believe is unstoppable. So I was so excited for a lot of reasons that he was there and willing to stand up. Chad Wolf appeared on Fox Business to analyze the incoming administration's plans to address the crisis at the southern border. Chad highlighted the role of federal resources, including the Department of Defense, in enforcing border security and removing criminal aliens. He underscored the urgency of reinstating policies like remain in Mexico to deter illegal immigration effectively. Well, it's beyond awful because any any criminal act, particularly this one committed by an illegal alien, is one that's preventable. They shouldn't be here to begin with, and they were facilitated. This individual appears to be facilitated by the Biden administration's border security policies, right? He's from Venezuela. He gets in on a parole. He gets flown and transported to New York City. He's not happy there, right? So New York then moves him to Georgia. All of this could have been avoided if you actually have policies in place that deter this illegal immigration and and folks that do claim asylum, do claim some type of protections under law. We don't simply release them into the country, right? You use Remain in Mexico or you use other things that that uh, were put in place to hold these individuals and then allow them their their time in court if they get to do that. But the simple idea of you're just going to release people into American communities and hope that, A, they show up to their immigration court proceedings and, B, that they don't do anything bad, we've seen just the opposite happen. And I think it's an indictment on the Biden administration. It's an indictment on catch and release. And it's got to stop on day one. General Keith Kellogg joined Fox News to discuss the importance of realigning U.S. foreign policy to counter global adversaries. General Kellogg praised the incoming administration's ability to rebuild respect with world leaders. He stressed the importance of separating adversarial alliances like China, Russia, and Iran, a strategy that proved effective during the previous administration. I don't think he has to meet with them immediately. I think they're gonna exchange some phone calls, but I think there's other things he's gotta focus on on real term in in an early part. And he has to solve that problem we've got in Ukraine and Russia right now with that war. He's committed to that. He said he was gonna fix that early on. I think that's the first one he's got to work with. He's got to go to Putin. You know what? What President Trump did in the last administration, which was absolutely brilliant, he kept all of those adversaries separated. He kept he kept China away from Russia, Russia away from Iran, North Korea away from all of them. And now they've coalesced. They're all together. Now we've got to kind of force our way to push them back apart again. And I think he'll do that. So I think the first one, the first target, the wolf closest to the sled is going to be the issue he's going to have to face with Ukraine and Russia and working with Putin. Michael Falkender appeared on RAV to discuss strategies for managing the national debt and reforming federal agencies. Michael explained the critical role of appointing leaders who can confront entrenched bureaucracies and implement long-term fiscal reforms. He emphasized the need for structural changes to reduce the $36 trillion national debt while ensuring economic stability. I am so excited that President Trump is going to get serious about massively cutting the size of the government, this uh, 
Doge group that Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy are going to lead are going to identify hundreds of billions of dollars, hopefully trillions of dollars. Base. Remember this year, this most recent fiscal year under the Biden administration, we ran nearly a $2 trillion deficit. So even if Elon and Vivek are able to bring that budget down to balance by offering up $2 trillion worth of budget savings, we still have $36 trillion worth of debt outstanding that needs to be regularly rolled over that we need to continue to interact with Wall Street and other financial capitals around the world to get them to buy our bonds in order to keep interest rates low, in order to have this debt that we have accumulated in order to, to you know, keep the interest rate on it low so that we can have money from taxation go to things like defense spending and social security rather than really high interest rates on the debt outstanding. And so I understand why for your listeners and viewers, it might be uncomfortable having a Wall Street banker in there. But the primary job, as I said, is is managing all of this debt. And so somebody who has the confidence of Wall Street and the confidence of international financial markets is actually something that you want in a Treasury secretary. Fred Flight spoke with the BBC to examine recent policy decisions affecting the conflict in Ukraine. Fred criticized the Biden administration's late-stage approval of long-range missiles to Ukraine, calling it a counterproductive move that complicates efforts for a negotiated settlement. He emphasized the importance of pressing for diplomacy to prevent future escalation. I think we're really looking at a new situation here with a new president who's going to press both sides for a negotiated settlement. This is a provocation. As I said, it's a provocation that Biden wouldn't agree to before the election. And the question is why? And I think uh, Biden is up to something he shouldn't be doing. He's making it harder for his successor to end this war. That wraps up this week's America First Policy Institute Weekly Rundown. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you found these insights from our policy experts valuable. Let us know your thoughts and feedback in the comments section below. And don't forget to like and share this video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you never miss an important update on the America First agenda. For more information on our policies and initiatives, visit AmericaFirstPolicy.com.